Hello, mathematicians. My name is Matt Sorbo, covering the algebra series on Skew the Script. Today, we'll be discussing logarithms, specifically, can money buy happiness? Without further ado, let's skew it. Welcome in to lesson 5.5 of the Skew the Script algebra series. Today, we'll be discussing logarithms. Specifically, you may have heard of Warren Buffett, often dubbed the Oracle of Omaha. He's one of the most successful investors ever in the United States. His net worth as of 2021 was in excess of $100 billion. If you invested $19 with Warren Buffett in 1964, it would be worth almost $300,000 in 2018 and even more today. So given that Warren has $101.3 billion at his disposal, what does he plan to do with his fortune? He could do, he could buy 5,000 luxury yachts, 1,600 tropical islands, he could buy 10,000 private jets, all those sound pretty tempting, but what does he actually plan to do? Give most of it away. Warren has said that his pledge is that more than 99% of his wealth goes to philanthropy during his lifetime or at his death. His family won't get any of that money. So this might be a little surprising to hear, but that's exactly today's key analysis. Why would Warren Buffett give away most of his wealth? If you'd like to follow along with today's lesson, check out the link below. Feel free to download or print out the guided notes and work along with the video. To start, we're gonna be reviewing logarithms, uh, uh, logs for short. Um, you can see our handy dandy little image there. Essentially, uh, we can think of inverse operations to start. These help us undo other operations in math. For example, if we have x plus 10 equals 25. How do we undo this operation and solve for x? Um, well, we have the addition operation. So the inverse is the subtraction operation. We subtract 10 from both sides, cancels out on the left side, we get x equals 15. How do we undo this operation, 2x equals 28, to solve for x? Well, we have two times x, which is multiplication. The inverse is division. We divide by divide by two, sorry, to get uh, twos canceling on the left side and x equals 14. How about this operation? Four to the power of x equals 64. The operation here is an exponent and the inverse is not immediately clear. However, as makes sense because we're talking about it this, this section, the true inverse is the logarithm. And in this example, we see that log base four of 64 equals X, which is a little confusing and we will get into it. Logs essentially undo the exponent and isolate X. So a good way to remember this is the loop. We start with a base, which in this case is four, and you can see it's in the base of the log. It's, it's colored green here. We go to the argument, which in this case is 64. It's the argument in our log function, so log base 4 of 64, and it loops all the way back to the exponent x, which is what we end up isolating in the end. So you can always evaluate a log in your calculator. This is log base 4 of 64. In this case, it comes out to 3, 3 equals x. And again, you can use it with any standard calculator. We can always check by plugging 3 back into our original equation. We get 4 to the power of 3 does indeed equal 64. 4 to the power of 2 is 16, times 4 again is 64. Um, and you can see it here, four times four times four is 64. That is 16 times four again is 64. So now that we've kind of reviewed what logarithms are, let's look at logs of big and small numbers. Returning to Warren Buffett's previous quote, he said, were we to use more than 1% of my wealth on ourselves, him and his family, neither our happiness nor our, our well-being would be enhanced. In contrast, that remaining 99% can have a huge effect on the health of welfare and others. So a key part of this quote is that neither his happiness or his well-being or that of his families would be enhanced. It would have a huge effect on the health and welfare of others. Mathematically, we can express this as wealth and happiness is modeled or can be modeled with a logarithm. So let's look at our handy dandy table where we have yearly income happiness on a zero to 10 scale, and we have a model, y equals log base 10 of x. x here equals yearly income. That's kind of our um, uh, explanatory variable. y happiness on a scale of zero to 10, 10 being the happiest. Um, in this case, we're going to use base 10 logs. And because it's a very standard uh, format, base 10 logs are often written without the 10, just written as logs. So here we have y, our happiness equals log of x, our yearly income. 
let's try plugging in some values. So we plug in our yearly income of just $10. Um, we're going to get y equals log 10, which comes out to one. So not very happy. Uh, um, one on a scale of zero to 10, not very happy, but that makes sense because yearly income is quite small. How about if we plug in a way bigger number than $10, $50,000 a year as a, year, a yearly income, we get y equals log 50,000. That comes out to 4.7. So much, much happier than with $10, 4.7, far higher than, than one on the scale of happiness. If we plug in $100,000 for our yearly income, we get a uh, happiness of five. And uh, we can continue in this way because we have log equal, y equals log of x. But first, we can look and see that when we go from $10 to $50,000 in our income, we get a huge increase, $50,000 increase. Um, and when we go from $50,000 to $100,000, we also get a $50,000 increase in income. Um, however, when we go from $10 to $50,000, we get a big jump in happiness, 3.7 points. But from 50,000 to 100,000, we get a much smaller jump, just 0.3 jump in happiness from those two points. So what's going on? We had a $50,000 increase in both, but a much bigger jump in happiness when we went from $10 to $50,000. Um, what's important to know is jumping from $10 to $50,000, this is jumping from the poverty line to middle income. What does middle income give you? Guaranteed shelter, likely you have health insurance from your job. Your next meal is not an issue and you have money for personal interests beyond your uh, disposable income or you, you have disposable income for your uh, personal interests beyond your basic costs and necessities. Um, you can see there's a huge jump in predicted happiness because it's a big jump in quality of life as we kind of detailed on the previous slide. When you jump from middle income to fairly high income, so 50,000 to 100,000, you do get some benefits. You have a better house, a nicer car, some spending on luxuries, but luxuries don't increase happiness as much as the guaranteed necessities of jumping from poverty to middle income. Um, one way to encapsulate this is with Maslow's hierarchy of needs, which you can see here. And this kind of outlines the question of if money can buy happiness. The higher you move up on this pyramid, the happier you are. The lower rungs of safety needs, so personal security, employment, resources, and physiological needs, so the very simple air, water, food, shelter, you can't move up on the rung until you've achieved the lower, lower level. So you need to be safe. You need to have your physiological needs cared for. You cannot reach esteem, self-actualization, love and belonging, if you're the higher rungs on the ladder, if you're still worried about food, water, and shelter on the lower rungs. Money can help a lot with the lower rungs. You can buy houses, you can buy food, all that stuff, but not so much with the higher rungs. It doesn't help as much with esteem, self-actualization, love and belonging. So if we return to our table and we continue plugging in higher values of income, we see the trend continues. Another $50,000 increase to $150,000 income per year just increases happiness by 0.2. And if we add, go up to $200,000 a year, happiness just increases by 0.1 to 5.3. Um, so again, looking at this uh, from the top, logarithms compress the numbers, right? So we have these really big numbers, logarithms compress it down to a smaller scale. They take the big numbers, which is the yearly income, um, and they compress them more than the small numbers. So yearly income of 10 gets compressed to one, the yearly income of 200,000 gets compressed all the way to 5.3. So that's a good property of logarithms. This is good for diminishing returns, which in this case, we'll talk about it more, means big money, a large salary earns little extra happiness as compared to early gains on, on happiness. So let's actually look at graphing logs to drive home this intuition. We take our table and we'll work to visualize it. We plot yearly income on the x-axis and happiness on the zero to 10 scale on the y-axis. And we can just put in our dots from the table here. And sort of think about what shape you see. We can draw this line here, this uh, kind of curved line, which represents log y equals log x. And remember our Maslow's hierarchy of needs pyramid. That first $50,000 in income makes happiness increase rapidly. You get a big increase in happiness because you can use it for basic needs, air, water, food, shelter, security, all that sort of stuff. But at higher incomes, we get diminishing returns. Your happiness increases less rapidly from the money you make, because the higher incomes don't help as much with self-actualization, esteem, and love and belonging. So let's think about a specific question. You work a very high income job, you make $400,000 per year. Let's imagine that you work super, super hard and you get a massive $100,000 raise. That's a big raise, 25% of the money that you make. How much is your happiness predicted to increase? So you go from 400,000 to 500,000, 
at law at y equals log of 400,000, your happiness is 5.6. How about at uh, log of 500,000? What does your happiness go to? 5.7. So you go from 5.6 to 5.7, just a 0.1 difference in happiness from that huge bonus. And again, this confirms the fact that at higher incomes, we see diminishing returns. Happiness increases much less rapidly at higher incomes. This kind of nails on the point. Money can't buy love and belonging, can't buy self-actualization or necessarily esteem. Warren Buffett, of course, of course, is way, way, way to the right on this chart. It extends a long way until we see Warren Buffett. And now we can return to his quote where he said that neither happiness or his well-being would be enhanced by this extra money. So if we think about how Warren's way over there on the scale of diminishing returns, if he can't get happier by earning more money, how can he increase his happiness? Well, he notes that giving away 99% of his wealth has a huge effect on the health and welfare of others. And as, as you can see, by Warren giving to his community, giving wealth to charity, and still saving enough to meet the needs of himself, it increases his belonging and esteem because he's helping others and serving others in the community. So it helps him with uh, his top of the pyramid. Now that we've kind of explored uh, Warren Buffett's decision-making in his uh, personal finances, let's turn to the discussion. Um, specifically, we'll be talking about the United States, which has a marginal tax system. For example, in 2021, if you earn your first $10,000 earned is taxed at 10%. Your next $30,000 is taxed at 12%, next $45,000 is taxed at 22%, et cetera. And then earnings after $500,000 is taxed at 37%. There are a couple of benefits of this marginal system. For example, for individuals that are not making as much money, their first $10,000 is has a lower tax because that's necessity money. It's required for safety needs, physiological needs, that sort of thing. Um, whereas more tax revenue is actually from luxury money. So money earned past $250,000, which doesn't increase happiness as much as we've seen, um, or may not increase happiness as much as we've seen, uh, we get more tax revenue from that. There's also no back penalty for earning more. So if you earn more than $10,000, it doesn't affect the taxes on the first $10,000. That means it is never better off to be working less, which is a, an important point to note. There is one catch. Wealthy individuals hire very good accountants who then find loopholes in the system to lower their taxes. You also have income from investments like Warren Buffett's stocks and bonds. Those are taxed differently than normal income. So Buffett uh, tried to establish the Buffett rule. He wrote a New York Times op-ed, which was titled Stop Coddling the Super Rich, and it's linked here. Um, he essentially proposed this rule to change tax codes to guarantee that the wealthy pay a higher dollar amount and a higher percent of their income in taxes. Not just a higher amount, but a higher percent. To do this, you have to eliminate loopholes and raise taxes on investments, which many of them have. So to turn to the discussion, do you agree with Buffett that the wealthy should pay not only a higher dollar amount in taxes, but also a higher percent of their overall income? Why or why not? And be sure to, to use the material from this lesson to support your answer. That's all for today. Thanks for joining, and we'll see you next time on Skew the Script.